So uh, I'm a computer scientist by training, and I've been working with sensor-based systems for about 15 years now. And I'm going to be making a claim here, which is already up here, which is that in the near future, our smartphones will know everything about us. They're going to know whether we have depression or not. They're going to know what our carbon footprint is. They're even going to know what our information needs are before we even know what those needs are. Now, I'm making this claim for three big reasons. The first one is just the sheer quantity of smartphones that are out there. There are over one billion smartphones, which is a really impressive number when you realize that smartphones pretty much came out in 2007. The second one is our smartphones already know a lot of information about us. Our smartphones today already know who we know based off our contact list and social networking apps. They already know where we go based on GPS, cell tower data, and Wi-Fi data. And they also know to a weak extent what we do based on the apps we use as well as all the sensor data that's there. The third reason is that these devices might be the most intimate devices we've ever created. Now, let me give you some fast facts about millennials based on some surveys. 83% of millennials sleep with their phones. 90% say they check their phones first thing in the morning, and over a third admit they use them in the bathroom. Okay? So if we, took, if we take all three of these kinds of trends and push them to a logical conclusion, we come back to this claim that in the near future, our smartphones will know everything about us. Now, in many ways, this will be a good thing because I think that this data can be used for tremendous amounts of good for society, that they can help us in terms of urban planning, in terms of transportation, healthcare, and other kinds of things, too. But I've already seen some of you squirming in your seats. You know, even though the lights are bright, I can still see many of you squirming in your seats because you're all thinking about the same thing. What about the privacy issues? How do we know what data is being collected, where it's being sent, and how it's being used? And these are not just hypothetical concerns, too. These are actually already happening. So, you know, if we look at this kind of thing, this is the main thesis of my research group here. If we fail to address the privacy and security issues, we could blunt the adoption of amazing technologies with huge societal benefits. Now, let me give you some concrete examples that you may not know is already being collected about you based on your smartphones. If any of you play Angry Birds on your Android phone, it turns out it's actually collecting your location data and your unique device ID. If you use the Bryce Flashlight app, it collects your location data, it wants internet access, and also wants your unique device ID. And if you use this Holy Bible app, it also wants your location data and unique device ID. Imagine that. Even supreme deities need the help of Apple and Google to figure out where you are. <laughs> so what can we do about this? So what my team has been looking at at Carnegie Mellon University is how do we dissect the behaviors of these apps and explain these behaviors to people? So what we've been using is a whole suite of tools to dissect these apps into smaller pieces and using crowdsourcing techniques to gather people's perceptions of these apps. So for example, most people don't think Angry Birds uses location data, but in reality it does. And so this big gap here, and we call this a privacy problem. In contrast, if I asked you, do you think Google Maps uses location data, pretty much everybody here would say yes. It's really obvious. And so we consider this less of a privacy problem. And what we've been also trying to do is, how do we summarize all these findings together in a way that's easy for people to understand? So this is one of our early kinds of prototypes for trying to convey this. Here for the Bryce Flashlight app, 95% of people are surprised that this app sends their approximate location to mobile ad providers. Now one thing that we found out in our work too that's really interesting is that most people are generally uncomfortable with this kind of data collection when they don't know what it's for, but they are generally okay with it, even for advertising purposes, as long as it's clear to them what's going on. Now, I've only been addressing and talking about one issue so far, which is end users, but we also need to help developers, too. When we've talked to developers, a lot of them just don't know what they should be doing. They don't have good tools or guidelines, and so we need better kinds of techniques to help developers create secure and privacy-sensitive apps. And we also need to look at public policymakers as well, too, because when we talk to the public policymakers, they have to balance all these different kinds of forces between the ecosystem and also the developers and happiness with the end users. So how can we help public policymakers create better guidelines around privacy? Now, this, the issues I've been talking about with smartphones are just the tip of the iceberg, too. There's a theme here that maybe you've heard of called ubiquitous computing, and this envisions a world where sensors and computation and communication is embedded everywhere in the world around us. And again, this can provide tremendous benefits for society, but only if we can address these privacy and security issues. So I'd like to end with one last question here. How can we create a connected world that we would want to live in? Thank you very much. Thank you.